The Deputy Prime Minister Sheikh Khalid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa chaired the weekly cabinet meeting at Qadibiya Palace. The cabinet extended its congratulations to His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa following the success of the 2024 Formula One Gulf Air Bahrain Grand Prix. The cabinet noted the significance of this year's race as it coincides with the 20th anniversary of Bahrain's hosting the race at the Bahrain International Circuit (BIC) and commended the efforts of the Bahraini workforce in the Ministry of Interior (BIC) and relevant government authorities in the organization and success of the global sporting event. In this regard, the cabinet reviewed a memorandum submitted by the Ministerial Committee for Financial and Economic Affairs and Physical Balance on the positive impact of hosting Formula One races across various economic sectors within Bahrain. The cabinet extended its best wishes to His Majesty the King, His Royal Highness, the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, the citizens of Bahrain and the Arab and Islamic nations on the occasion of the upcoming holy month of Ramadan. The cabinet also commended the kingdom's comprehensive uh, women's advancement program and policies on the the occasion of International Women's Day led by the Supreme Council for Women, the SCW. The wife of His Majesty the King and President of the SCW, Her Royal Highness Princess Sabika bint Ibrahim Al Khalifa. The Cabinet then followed up on the efforts of the Ministry of Industry and Commerce to intensify inspection campaigns to monitor markets, ensuring price stability and ensuring the abundance of consumer goods ahead of the holy month of Ramadan. The Cabinet discussed and approved several memorandums during the meeting. A memorandum submitted by the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs regarding a draft law approving the status of the Hague Conference on Private International Law. A memorandum submitted by the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs regarding an MOU between the Ministry of Electricity and Water Affairs and the Bahrain Airport Company. A memorandum submitted by the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs on an MOU between the Bahrain Tourism and Exhibitions Authority, the Department of Economy and Tourism of Abu Dhabi, the Department of Culture and Tourism in Dubai, and the Ministry of Heritage and Tourism of Oman. A memorandum submitted by the Minister of Cabinet Affairs and Chairman of the Board of Directors of the Education and Training Quality Authority regarding the approval of the authority's reports. A memorandum submitted by the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs on the government's response to four proposals submitted by the Council of Representatives and a proposed law submitted by the Shura Council. The Cabinet then reviewed the following two memorandums. A memorandum submitted by the Ministerial Committee for Social Services on the latest developments across government hospitals and primary health care centres. A memorandum submitted by the Minister of Legal Affairs on the outcomes of implementing the Government of Bahrain's annual legislative plan for the year 2023. The Cabinet then took note of the following uh, through ministerial reports outcomes of the Kingdom's uh, participation in the 41st session of the Arab Interior Minister's Council. Outcomes of the Kingdom's participation in the 159th session of the Ministerial Council of the GCC and the joint ministerial meetings between the GCC along with Egypt, Jordan and Morocco. Outcomes of the Kingdom's participation in the high-level segment of the 55th session of the UN Human Rights Council. Outcomes of the Kingdom's participation in the Conference of Agricultural Minister Ministers of the World's Date Producing and uh, Processing Countries and in the ceremony honoring the recipients of the Khalifa International Award for Date of Palm and Agricultural Innovation. Outcomes of the Kingdom's participation in the Human Capability Initiative. Outcomes of the Kingdom's participation in the 13th World Trade Organization Ministerial Conference. Outcomes of the Kingdom's participation in the 47th session of Council of Arab Youth and Sports Ministers. The representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs and Chairman of the Babco Energies, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, met with the Chairman and the CEO of Total Energies, Patrick Boyan, and Group CEO of Babco Energies, Mark Thomas. The meeting laid the foundations for cooperation between Babco Energies and Total Energies, under which Total Energies will support Babco Energies in optimizing its Citra refinery, which is currently being upgraded and in trading of its petroleum products. Total Energies will also bring its uh, global oil and feedstock supply capacity as well as its refining and trading expertise. His Highness welcomed this partnership, which will help build a quality uh, customer base for expanded production. He added that he is looking forward to working in partnership with the Total team and bringing their experience and technology to Bobco Energies. Jan expressed his pleasure to have been selected by the Bahraini authorities to support Bobco Energies in optimizing their downstream petroleum operations with a view to maximizing value for Bahrain. He added that this partnership marks the beginning of a promising relationship between Total Energies and Bahrain. 
Her Highness Sheikh Jawahar bin Abdullah bin Isa Al Khalifa, the wife of His Highness Sheikh Isa bin Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, chairman of the Board of Trustees of the Isa bin Salman Education Charitable Trust and chairman of the Board of Directors of Tamkin, inaugurated the annual Flower and Vegetable Show 2024 organized by the Bahrain Garden Club (VGC) at the Awal Ballroom in the Gulf Hotel, Bahrain. Her Highness uh, Sheikh Jawahar affirmed that the agriculture sector in the kingdom continues to thrive with the steadfast support of his Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and His Royal Highness Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the Crown Prince and Prime Minister. She pointed out that their support has strengthened initiatives aimed at advancing the sector and bolstering the kingdom's food security. Her Highness highlighted the efforts and contributions of Her Royal Highness Princess Sabika bint Ibrahim Al Khalifa, wife of His Majesty the King and President of the Supreme Council for Women, the SCW, and chair of the Advisory Council of the National Initiative for Agricultural Sector Development and strengthening the agricultural sector. Sheikh Jawahar noted that the initiatives and projects adopted to enhance Bahraini agriculture positioned it as a key sector for economic diversification in the kingdom. She stressed the importance of enhancing local agricultural production to ensure self-sufficiency and food security in Bahrain. Her Highness highlighted the importance of the competition as a platform for sharing expertise, fostering creativity and driving innovation in agricultural production. Her Highness Sheikh Jawahar bint Abdullah commended the efforts of the organizers of the event and wished them success in future events. She viewed the exemplary models presented by the participants in the annual competition. The milestones of this show t this year, it is three categories that, that is really important. Uh, our collaboration with the Ministry of Education through the schools, government and private schools, of participation of students in our competitions. And there are so many categories for students. Uh, and this is 50 years with our collaboration. We started really back in 74 with two schools in Manama, and now we have hundreds of schools that they are joining us in competition. The second, it is a 25th uh, edition of His Majesty's Cup for the Residence Garden, which is uh, the, the biggest challenge cup. Uh, the garden should have so many categories, and it has to be wow to win, really. Uh, thirdly, it is uh, Her Royal Highness Princess Sevisha bint Ibrahim Al Khalifa, the wife of His Majesty the King. It's uh, the photography competition. And I'm so happy that the judges uh, uh, conveyed uh, the message that this year the standard was high, especially in uh, categories of students and amateurs, because we have three cups, uh, students, amateurs, and professionals. I won the cup of the king for my garden, and it's a great honor for me. 
I have won it from before, three times before, over the years. And this time is a, is a special uh, year because it is the 20th anniversary of the King's Cup. The Minister of Tourism, uh, Fatma bin Jafar al-Sarafi, met with the Secretary General of the United Nations World Tourism Organization, UNWTO, Zurab uh, Polilik Kashvi. On the sidelines of the Minister's participation in the official ceremony in Riyadh, this came on the occasion of reaching 100 million tourists in Saudi Arabia during the year 2023. The two sides discussed the Kingdom's preparations for hosting the ninth edition of the World Forum on Gastronomy Tourism 2024, the latest global event in food tourism. The meeting reviewed Bahrain's tourism entertainment potential emphasizing the sector's readiness to welcome participating delegations promising exceptional tourism experiences during their stay. al Sarifi underscored Bahrain's commitment to advancing the global tourism sector highlighting Bahrain's support for the UNWTO to accelerate the growth and recovery of the tourism sector and raising its performance rates. The minister highlighted initiatives aimed at improving the tourism infrastructure raising environmental standards and encouraging sustainability. She mentioned the selection of Manama as the Gulf tourism capital for 2024 forming its position as one of the key tourism hubs in the region. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdel Latif bin Rashid Zayani, participated in the uh, 159th meeting of uh, the Ministerial Council of the GCC in Riyadh. The meeting was shared by the Minister of Foreign Affairs of Qatar and Chairman of the current session, Sheikh Mohammed bin Abdul Rahman Al Thani, in the presence of their Highnesses and Excellencies, the Foreign Ministers of the GCC, and with the participation of the GCC Secretary General Jassim Libdewi. The meeting also discussed the topics on the agenda and the decisions that were implemented by the Supreme Council and the Ministerial Council regarding regarding strengthening the process of joint uh, Gulf cooperation in various fields. The report submitted by the General Secretariat on topics and issues related to the efforts made by member states to enhance integration among the GCC. The meeting discussed the results of the strategic dialogues between member states and the outcomes of the negotiation of tra free trade agreements between the GCC countries and a number of countries' international groups to enhance economic cooperation between the two sides. The ministers also discussed developments in the regional and international situation, the challenges facing the countries of the region and the repercussions on regional security and stability, including the humanitarian situation in the Gaza Strip and the West Bank and uh, the Arab efforts being made to reach a ceasefire, providing protection for civilians, delivering humanitarian aid and advancing the efforts of the peace process to end the war. The Minister of Foreign Affairs also participated in the joint ministerial meeting held between their Highnesses and Excellencies, the Foreign Ministers of the GCC, Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Foreign Affairs and Expatriates of Jordan, Dr. Ayman al safadi and the Minister of Foreign Affairs, African Cooperation in Moroccans Abroad, Nasser Bourita, and the Ministers of Affairs of Foreign Affairs of Egypt, Samah Shukri, within the framework of the strategic partnership linking the GCC countries and Arab countries. During the meeting, the prospects for developing bilateral cooperation in areas common interests were discussed and ways to intensify Arab efforts to address issues related to maintaining regional security and stability. The ministers also discussed the challenges facing the Arab world threatening its security and stability, foremost of which is the Palestinian cause, the humanitarian situation in the Gaza Strip and the efforts made by Arab countries to stop the war and provide protection for civilians. The Ministerial Council welcomed the results of the joint ministerial meetings with the foreign ministers of brotherly countries and stressed the importance of intensifying efforts to implement joint action plans with the three countries. The Ministerial Council affirmed the position of the GCC in supporting the security stability and sovereignty of Jordan and supporting its efforts in combating terrorism. The Council also affirmed that water security for Egypt and Sudan is part of the Arab national security and supported all endeavors that would contribute to resolving the uh, Renaissance Dam issue in a manner that takes into account the interests of all parties. The Ministerial Council also affirmed its firm position regarding maintaining the security and stability of Morocco and supporting the Moroccan uh, Sahara. During the meetings, a memorandum of understanding for cultural cooperation was signed between the General Secretariat of the G CC and Morocco. The Regional Center for Training and Capacity Building Combat Traffic in Person at the LMRA organized a training workshop on managing the affairs of victims and trafficking crimes. The workshop aims to enhance support for victims and provide comprehensive care that includes psychological, medical, social, and legal aspects. The workshop included several topics, the most important of which was focusing on understanding victims in terms of indicators, cultural barriers, symptoms, psychological impact and traumas to which they are exposed. Through these initiatives, the LMRA seeks to raise the level of competencies and skills of workers in various sectors to identify and assist victims or suspected uh, cases 
which contributes to improving the work environment and providing security and stability for the victims. The reason of having this partnership with the National Crime Agency is to strengthen the collaboration and to conduct as much as new and updated practitioner about how we can combat, uh, combat human trafficking. And uh, furthermore, uh, this workshop is aimed to provide assistance and support of how victims can understand the regulations and law and how they can protect themselves in terms of uh, avoiding any signs and recognize the signs and to whom uh, should they go and what kind of a body they need to complain to about the uh, situation. So basically NCA is focusing on safeguarding and how they can protect from sex exploitation and all of that. This will add a value to LMRA to strengthen, to, to strengthen more with this uh, partnership with NCA National Crimes Agency. Our international network as part of the National Crime Agency uh, it's all about capacity building, sharing experiences, sharing knowledge and it's a pleasure to be able to invite two of members of our specialist witness team to come to Bahrain this week uh, to educate, uh, share knowledge, speak with delegates, uh, information share all about uh, human trafficking and modern slavery uh, which is obviously clearly a very abhorrent crime. Uh, it's a global issue that many countries share and we're in the position now to be able to come over and expert some of the things that are going on in the United Kingdom and hopefully uh, you know, the organisations and ministries in here, Bahrain, might be able to take some things away which might help their efforts to tackle this problem. Uh, now that we've started the journey of uh, combating um, uh, human trafficking and the workshops that we've been taking lately, I feel this workshop is really going to add to us, especially that's highlighting the way to identify, it's highlighting uh, to know how to guide uh, the victim to the safeguards. Uh, and this will, will really uh, reflect on our jobs, especially in the medical field, as it is a field that we could be seeing a lot of victims, yet some might be bypassed. This will really highlight for us the way we can really identify all the victims and understanding what's going on within the victim's uh, mind, um, why the victim is not uh, coming forward to us, and it'll teach us how to dig into uh, the way to get the information from the victim himself and make them feel safe and make them reach to safeguarding.